guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Aladdin Box Skycube 3D Printer. I know normally my channel is devoted to how-to videos, but Gearbest reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try reviewing a printer, so I agreed to try it out and give my unbiased opinion. Full disclosure, Gearbest did send me this printer for free, but they're not paying me for this review, and I intend to be as honest as possible in reviewing it, for better or for worse. First off, the printer comes out of the box fully assembled. Just remove from the packaging, put the bed in place, and level it. Remove the retainers from the Z-axis rails, load up some filament, and it's ready to print. The print volume on this printer is 115 by 115 by 125, which is comparable to the Kodama Obsidian that weighs in at 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters. The bed on the Aladdin Box Skycube is magnetic and removable, and allows you to flex it to remove your prints when they're done. It has four stepper motors, one for each axis and one for the extruder. It comes with a power adapter brick that supplies power compactly and safely compared to some other printers in the same price range, and the interface is reasonably user friendly. In addition to all of that, the construction is considerably rigid compared to most RepRap style 3D printers. Also, this printer doesn't have a heated bed, but so far for printing PLA and PETG, I haven't had any problem with parts sticking as long as I use a few layers of glue stick. I haven't tried printing any ABS, but there really isn't much point in trying it without a heated bed. Included in the box is the printer with a magnetic bed and a separate bag, a glue stick, a small spool of filament, a USB cable, an SD card reader, and a 1GB SD card. The SD card has several G-code files on it to print straight out of the box, as well as the drivers that you'll need to connect this printer to your computer. A couple of minor annoyances I had with the printer right off the bat. First is the spool holder. Although I use the term loosely, there is a plastic clip that folds down from the side of the printer that barely manages to hold the included miniature spool of filament. If you intend to get a full-size spool of filament for printing after the sample filament is gone, you're going to need a bigger spool holder. While there are ones that you can buy online, or just makeshift scenarios you can devise to hold a larger spool of filament, there is a great spool holder on Thingiverse that prints in just small enough parts to be able to print on this printer with supports. And after it's assembled, it should hold a full-size 1kg spool of filament. Also, there is no part cooling fan on this printer. This seems to be pretty common with smaller, inexpensive 3D printers, but without one, the finish quality of your print, as well as any overhangs you attempt, will most likely suffer. I found that putting a small desk fan on the table next to my printer for PLA really helped improve the overall results. But for the PETG I tested, I've never had luck with using a fan on any printer, so I just left it without and it seemed to do reasonably well. Next is the issue of the instruction manual which doesn't do a very good job of describing some essential steps in setting up the printer, but I will cover the ones that I thought were relevant in this video. For example, step one of the installation instructions say to take down the protecting clap with a fairly unhelpful picture, so I didn't manage to figure out what they were referring to until I tried to print something. If you look at the vertical rails of the Z-axis, you'll see one of them has plastic clips on the top and the bottom of the X carriage. You'll need to remove those before you try to print anything, otherwise you'll hear the loud buzzing of a stepper motor skipping until you turn off the printer. The other issue I had with the instruction manual was the explanation of how to adjust the height of the sprayer nozzle. Before you start printing anything, you will need to adjust your nozzle height, otherwise you risk doing damage to your nozzle or your print bed. To do that, first take note of the adjustable screw with the spring around it in the back of the printer. Adjusting the height of the screw adjusts where the Z-axis end stop will trigger as the X carriage is lowering. Since there really isn't any manual control of the printer from the menu, you'll need to adjust the Z-axis height by hand. To do that, turn the Z-axis lead screw from the top of the printer by hand counterclockwise until the nozzle gets to about a paper's width above the bed. Look at the adjustable screw and see if it's triggered the end stop already. If it hasn't, you'll need to raise the Z-axis back up and loosen the screw a little bit at a time until the end stop triggers at the right nozzle height. I wasn't able to get my hand into the printer with the X-carriage fully lowered, so it took a few minutes of raising and lowering the nozzle to get it right. However, I've only adjusted it once or twice since then, and I've been pretty much printing on this thing non-stop since it showed up. Also, after about my third print, the grub screws that hold the brass gear on the extruder stepper motor came loose, causing the printer to stop extruding halfway through a print. 
Honestly, this is to be expected with pretty much any 3D printer, especially when you receive it in the mail. This has been an issue on every printer that I own except for the Prusa i3 Mark II S, and only not an issue in that case because I built it myself. The point here is, if you run into this problem with any 3D printer, not just the SkyCube, check your extruder gear to make sure the grub screws are holding it tightly and that the teeth are in the right place to actually push filament. In my opinion, all of the above is reasonable and pretty much to be expected for this level of printer. The only thing that's really been an issue for me is the bed. The magnetic flexible bed is a great concept. As long as I apply a few layers of glue stick and get the nozzle height right, my prints have always done a pretty good job of sticking to the bed. However, without a heated bed, cooling PLA plastic has a tendency to warp upward while it's printing. And assuming your first layer is making solid contact, that means the print is going to be putting excess upward pressure on it. Since the bed is easily flexible, the sides and the corner have a tendency to bow. This may not seem like too much of a problem until you realize the warped up corners mean the print bed will wiggle around causing layer shifts and in some cases skipped layers altogether. However, either some printed bed clips or alligator clips on all four corners of the bed will pretty much make that a non-issue. With all of that said, looking past the basic hangups you're going to run into with any budget 3D printer, the print quality on this printer is pretty decent out of the box. It comes with several nice G-code files ready to print on the included mini SD card, and I used one of those to make a simplified 3D profile that I've been pretty happy with so far. Also, the SD card slot is conveniently located right next to the LCD screen. The printer is running a stripped down custom version of Marlin, and the scroll wheel seems to be nice and responsive. The one thing that really surprised me though is that I didn't have any problems with trying to print PETG filament. Granted my print profile could use a few tweaks for the PETG that I was using, and the bed started bowing upward towards the end of my print so I did get a few skipped layers and some stringing, but the smooth edges of this crystal slime's face are pretty much perfect. If you're wanting to use this printer to print out a new spool holder, I arranged the parts of the spool holder that I normally use to be placed upright on the print bed and uploaded it to Thingiverse. All four pieces of the two outer walls can print at the same time, then you just need two crossbars and the beam to hold the spool which can be printed after that. It's not the fastest solution, but if this is your only 3D printer and you want a decent spool holder, it is a good option to make yourself one and only two prints. Also, I'll upload a link to the printed bed clips that I designed in case you want to try those out as well. All things considered, this printer is not the best 3D printer out there. It isn't going to replace your Prusa i3 Mark II S by any stretch of the imagination. But in my opinion, for 150 bucks, it would make a decent and affordable first 3D printer for a kid who's interested in trying out 3D printing as a hobby, or even for an adult who just wants to print mini figurines and the occasional small part. One thing I will mention, however, is if you buy this for your kid, you may want to preview the G-code files on it before you give it to them. Most of the files in the SD card I received were pretty kid friendly, but there was one called Body on the SD card that is a little bit more PG-13. If any of you are interested in buying the Aladdin Box SkyCube, I'll put a link down in the description with a coupon code to get a few dollars off of the list price. Also, I wanted to say thanks to Gearbest for sending this printer over for me to review. I know my channel is still pretty small, so it means a lot that anybody's willing to take a chance on my efforts. If any of you have any ideas or suggestions for other videos you'd like to see on my channel, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I have about three other videos lined up right now that I'll be trying to get done in the next few weeks, but I'm always open to taking requests if there's something 3D printing related that you're interested in knowing more about. If this video was at all helpful to you, feel free to click the like or subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.